Path Pilot Quick Tips Robot Edition. In this video, I'm going to go over subprograms and why you might use them and how to create them and how to call them using our conversational programming capabilities. So, well, quickly, let's go ahead over to conversational. Um, we're in the home position right now, I believe. Yep. So let's go ahead and jog, oh, I don't know, we'll orient the marker like this. And then I'll oh, let's move down to 600 and Z. Yeah, let's call it 800 and Z. And I'm gonna uh, drop a few waypoints just to draw a square. Um, this video might be a little bit more involved than some of the other uh, user interface quick tip videos because I'm trying to illustrate a concept of why and when you might use subroutines. So before I draw this square, what I'm going to go ahead and do um, is create a new user frame here. We'll just call it offset one. We'll make it active. Here I am and I'm going to call this x0, y0, z0. Okay, so you can see that my little coordinate system zero is now right where the robot's end effector is. So I'm going to create a new waypoint from this. It'll be a pose waypoint, um, and I'll do it. Oh, I don't know. We'll do it uh, local to the program. I'll call it pose one, and let's um, move out 100 millimeters in uh, Y, and we'll do pose two and then 100 millimeters in X and we'll call this pose 3 and then uh, let's see I think we need to go back to uh, what 0 in Y pose 4 alright and um, we can add moves to these so I'm gonna add Let's say, very first thing I'll do is we'll move uh, an add to the home position. And then we'll do a joint move to the first pose. And then because I wanted to draw the square, let's assume maybe I had a pen held in the end effector here, we'll use linear moves to draw the perimeter of the square. right? And we'll save this as um, sub program example. Okay, we we'll take a look and see if this does what we expect. It's moving to the home position, goes to the start of the square, and it draws a square. Actually, I have a little mistake in here. Let's clean that up. Get rid of that, and I move to pose four. And you can see here that any time we add um, a move to uh, a pose that has a work offset associated with it, we're, we're being pretty safe here. We're going in adding a work offset command. That one's redundant because we've already gone to that work offset there. Pose 1, pose 2, pose 3, pose 4. Oh, we need to go back to pose 1. That's the problem. Okay, now we can get rid of this. Always nice to do examples on the fly. Maybe it's helpful for people to see me correct my mistakes. <laughs> so it's drawing a square now. That's not so bad. Uh, but we want it to draw two squares here. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is um, let's go ahead and jog to, uh, oops. Let's go ahead and jog to this waypoint. And then I'm going to rotate the entire machine here, um, I don't know, 90 degrees-ish. And I'll go ahead and create a new system of offsets. And I will change to this offset system. And we'll go ahead and zero out our X, Y, and Z here. So you can see now that my, my little coordinate system, zero nomen, is there. And let's go back here to conversational. And what I'm going to do is uh, we'll add a change to the active offset to the program. So now we've changed to offset 2. And then I think 
Uh, let's see, why don't we just go ahead and we'll do a joint move to pose one here. So I got pose one highlighted, I'm gonna do a joint move. I'm gonna add that move to the program. Now notice it put in that work offset. We're gonna go back and delete that in a moment. And then I'll go ahead and add my linear moves to draw my square. Hopefully I won't make the mistake I made earlier, right? Let's get rid of this. So what we have now is a move to the home position. We change to, to the offset one, user frame one. We draw our square. Then we change to the offset two. We draw our square, but we're using the same waypoints here because we created them as pose waypoints and pose waypoints are affected by changes to um, the user frame or to the, the current offset coordinate system. So we can see it's drawing the square in the first location and then the work offset changes and it draws the square in the second location. All right, that was an awful lot of setup just to introduce the idea of subroutines. So you can see there's a lot here that is repeated. We've got a move J to the first pose, then we have move L's to pose two, pose three, pose four, and back to the start of the square. We got a bunch of repeated commands in here. So do you think we could do these instead as a subprogram? Let's try it. So we'll go over to the subprogram tab and <clears throat> we want to insert a subprogram here. So here's this empty subprogram. And what we're going to want to do is add these moves to the subprogram. Okay? So let's go back to the move tab. Now that I'm in the subprogram, we'll do exactly what we did before a joint move. is going to be my first my first move here. It's a joint move. I like joint moves for the uh, initial positioning move because they're free space moves for the robot. They're faster, they're easier to plan. Linear moves are a little harder to plan. And if I don't have to make a big linear move, I'm not going to try it. You can imagine if a linear move moves through one of the robot singularities, it's just not going to be able to do that move. So I always try to do my initial positioning with a joint move. Then we'll go ahead and draw the lines of our square, just as we've done before. Okay, now I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna get rid of that work offset one. Let me then go down here and I'm gonna delete um, all this stuff. Let's see, boop, 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 boop. Okay, so we've got one subprogram that moves to these various uh, points of the square. And then we have the main program here. The main program starts off moving to the uh, home position. Let's then add a change to the work offset. And then we'll come over here to subprogram and we're gonna call this subprogram, right? Let's go back over uh, and add a, a change to offset two. And we'll come back to subprogram and we'll call subprogram. So this is an example where we've defined our square moves, the moves that draw the square, up here in a subprogram. And now instead of having to, to redefine that every single time I want to draw the square, I can simply change the work offset, call the subprogram. Change the work offset, call the subprogram. So let's see if it works as expected. It's drawing my square. It's changing my offset, and it's drawing my square. So just to recap, subprograms are useful when you have a, a logical, um, typically smaller um, grouping of robot moves or codes that you want to execute. Um, and frequently, subprograms, are they can be called just once, but frequently, you write a subprogram when you need to call that same sequence of moves or, or commands repeatedly throughout the program. Uh, you also in this video saw a little bit about uh, work offsets or user frames as they're called in robotics. And you, you got a little tutorial there on pose waypoint types and on linear move versus joint move types. I hope you enjoyed this quick tip and stay tuned for more PathPilot Robot Edition Quick Tips. Thanks.